spectacular sights, a limitless spirit of adventure, love for the outdoors, captivating animal life. Australia is a traveler's delight, a country with so much to offer. This is the story of my two weeks down under, memories for a lifetime. My journey began at the Sydney Harbour, one of the most beautiful natural harbours in the world. And the best way to get a look was to be on it. When you're in Sydney, you cannot miss the beautiful waters over here. Ferries and yachts crisscrossing across the sparkling waters. What we're going to do is go sailing now. I've never been on one of these boats, so let's find out. Quite a sight, the harbour lined with sailing and cruise boats. Your arms go through the side, take it nice and tight around the back and tie it up at the front. Your hands, if it does get bouncy, there'll be waves and wake from ferries and stuff, so it will get a bit bouncy, so just be careful. After the safety instructions, we were out in the sea. A beautiful day, blue waters and this skyline, a magnificent view. As I looked at the Opera House, one of the most iconic buildings of the 20th century and a multi-venue performing arts centre for Sydney, Wendy was out to hoist the head sail. I knew nothing about sailing, but Wendy helped me to learn the ropes. Going under the Sydney Harbour Bridge on our boat, I looked forward to my next stop. The Sydney Harbour Bridge, constructed between 1926 and 1932, is the world's largest steel arch bridge. The Sydney Harbour Bridge is one of the structural wonders of the world, made out of 52,000 tons of steel. What we're going to do is try and climb this bridge. The climb takes you right to the top of the arch, 134 meters above water level. As I began, I couldn't help but marvel at the construction of this steel wonder. As I went higher, walking through the catwalks and ladders, looking down wasn't very easy. But being tied to a rope was a relief. It's fascinating to be on top of one structural wonder and to be able to look at another. That's the Sydney Opera House, one of the most iconic buildings of the 20th century in the world. at the top of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The feeling of conquering one of the world's most recognized architectural wonders and add to that the best view of Sydney. This was the ultimate Sydney experience. Just 30 minutes away from the city is the stunning Bondi Beach, a surfer's paradise. I wanted a piece of this action. The weather wasn't too encouraging but my surfing instructor was. 29-year-old Shelley has been surfing since she was 12 and got to business right away. A 9-foot surfboard and lots of passion was all that was required and I was having fun. Shelley started with some exercises to get warmed up. And then I was shown how to balance on the board when a wave would hit me. Alright, do you want to give my track? Then you want to put your arms really low, tucked in and then just push up. The whole way. Seemed easy in the sand, in the water it was another story. I think I drank a gallon of seawater trying to learn. But with every wave, it felt like my moment of victory. And trust me, those waves hit hard. Even as I learned how to catch a wave, the real thing was standing up on the board. That's what real surfers do, cut through the waves like a pro. Shelly took that seriously to teach me how to stand. I was given four basic steps. Lie on the board, raise your head, then your body, step up with one leg and take a posture like you're about to run a 100 meter dash. We were in the water again. I'd been a good student but the first two attempts were embarrassing. But then we got a huge wave and out of nowhere I managed to stand up right to the shore. I don't know if a professional surfer would have been proud of it, but I sure was. Uh, 
From Sydney in New South Wales, we travel to Melbourne in Victoria, a bustling city famous for its fine restaurants and beautiful laneways, which are little art centres of their own. Melbourne's renowned for its art and street culture. I'm here at the Federation Square, which is really the hub of all the cultural activity in the city. The square itself has a very laid-back feel to it, with people just sitting around, maybe catching up with their friends at the same time, enjoying the entertainment that is on offer. The cultural bit was fun, but it was the sporting bit at the festival that got me excited. Okay, ready? That's the Aussie way, isn't it? Go! One, two, three, four, five! Well, I didn't win, but I didn't lose either. In Melbourne, people are riding their way across the city on their bicycles. Some for pure fun, some for fitness. For me, it was wanting to feel a unique sense of freedom in the city. There I was on my bike at St Kilda Beach on a Sunday afternoon. A perfect outing for the families camping at the beach. Fitness enthusiasts jogging by the shoreline. This is signature Australia, a sporting nation. The semi-finals of the National Beach Volleyball Championships was on and I was hooked. A far cry from lazy Sundays at home. After all the outdoor activity, I decided to cool my heels and revel in the lap of luxury. And the Colonial Tram Car Restaurant was a perfect choice. One of Melbourne's star attractions. This is a sightseeing tour, but with a difference. This restaurant on wheels was a throwback to a different era. Cruising through the streets of Melbourne, I enjoyed a three-course dinner and a glass of fine Australian wine. This was a rare experience, a window to the hustle and bustle of a modern city from a calmer setting. From the luxurious tram ride, we turned our attention to wildlife in Australia. And the Ballarat National Park was the ideal place. <laughs> Not just to see Australia's native animals, but also get up close and personal with them. The kangaroos at the Ballarat Wildlife Park were anything but wild. They were friendly and fun. The park has over 100 kangaroos that roam around freely and are very comfortable with the visitors around them. Our next stop was to interact with the koalas. These soft and cuddly marsupials have a lifestyle to die for, sleep for 16 to 18 hours a day and eat for about 3 hours. My park ranger Stuart was very keen to give me some hands-on lessons on how to handle the animals. And there I was, holding a wombat. So how many kgs does she weigh? Oh, she probably weighs about um, 23. I think she's about 23 kilos. That's good for her yeah. arms. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> the park also has one of the largest private collection of reptiles. From various snakes like the Western Taipan, which is the most poisonous snake in the world, to seawater crocodiles. This 37-year-old crocodile weighed just under 300 kgs and was about 4.5 feet long. The thought of feeding him, like Stuart was, was a bit scary, but I decided to go for it. Wow. Okay, go back in, please. Thank you very much. Australia may be a young country, but it's rich in history and cultural heritage. From enjoying the wildlife, we turn our attention to the gold rush era in Ballarat. Sovereign Hill was the ideal place to start. A recreated Victorian gold mining town outside Ballarat. From the grocer's store to the post office to the bakery, the whole town takes you back to 1850s when gold was first discovered here and thousands of people rushed into town in search of fortune. The man who styles himself an editor. The town comes alive when you see costumed townsfolk talking among each other. You have just spoken truth. Everywhere I the Horse carriages on the road and red coat soldiers marching past. 
firing a volley of shots with their muskets. I'd always wanted to be transported back to the era of classics and I got my chance at Sovereign Hill. Dressed in 19th century clothing, I roamed the streets discovering the history of the town. How the gold mines worked, how gold was separated. And I also got to hold a brick of coal worth 160,000 Australian dollars. It was heavier than I expected. And no, I couldn't take it home. Security, I said it was in hand. <laughs> A drive across the Great Ocean Road is one of the top 10 rides in the world and since I was in Australia, I wasn't going to miss that opportunity to take the world famous road trip. Now I am told that we will be followed by the sea on one side so we will be able to look at clear waters and pristine beaches. Also, I am told that this is the world's longest war memorial because this was dedicated in the memory of the heroes who returned from the World War I and who constructed this road with just picks and shovels. So, I'm really looking forward to this drive. Let's go. This road follows the coast throughout and is a chance to see some of the most spectacular coastal scenery of anywhere. I was driving on the Grand Ocean Road to get to one of the most popular postcard pictures of Australia, the Twelve Apostles. These limestone formations stunningly rise out of the Southern Ocean and makes one marvel at what nature can create. We've just finished the drive across the magnificent Great Ocean Road but what I'm going to do is now go and take a look at the Victorian coastline from another perspective. Hi Steve, I Hi. hope I'll be safe. My pilot Steve told us that the 12 apostles are actually a collection of 8 limestone rock formations next to each other. And the coastline is also called the shipwreck coast for its dangerous rugged structures that has claimed many ships in the past. To me, the ride highlighted the beauty of the coastline with its yellow limestone cliffs against the crystal blue water of the ocean. There were two things I wanted to learn on my trip to Australia. One was to play the didgeridoo. But I was promptly told that the women weren't meant to play it. So I settled for the boomerang. Two of them. Both were part of the culture of the Aborigines of Australia. Oh, no. Now if you're in Australia, you have to learn how to throw a boomerang and the right way of throwing it so that it comes back. Paul here is going to teach us how it is done. Paul, go ahead. First thing, hold the boomerang. <laughs> hold the boomerang, okay. <laughs> now the best way to hold it is usually like a pencil or, pe or like a pinch grip. Okay, the artwork side is always on the inside. Okay, so that's the artwork side and that's the flat side there. Okay, so the first way you had it was perfect. Okay. Like that. Number two, in your feathers, mm -hmm. shows you which way the wind direction is coming from because you've got to throw it into the wind. Right. Okay, so the wind's coming this way, let's say that's 12 o'clock. So you've got to throw it at 2 o'clock because the, the boomerang will turn left okay. and that wind will push it back. Practice makes a woman perfect and I knew with practice I would only improve. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, yay. Oh, that's catchable. That's catchable. Not bad for my first lesson. Coming up after the break, you may think this is just another Harley, but guess who's been on it before me? Rafael Nadal and Caroline Wozniacki. That and some more adventure from Down Under, coming up. morning here in Melbourne and we're going to do something different today. I'm standing here with John and as you can see we're about to go on a Harley-Davidson ride. Tell us more about what we can expect from this John. 
Well, Miha, we're going to show you Melbourne like uh, you've, you've never seen it before. We show them all of the sites. We're here at the Grand Prix circuit at the moment. And really, this is the best way to see Melbourne because I call it high-speed walking. There aren't too many better ways to see Melbourne than on one of these classics. Wind on your face, the signature sound of the Harley. This is quite an experience. The sights and sounds of this city. Cruising on the roads of Melbourne, my chauffeur told me that the seat I was on seated a certain Rafael Nadal and a certain Caroline Wozniacki, and not too long ago. Well, so what if I'm not a patch on them as a tennis player? I can now claim to be part of a pretty exclusive club. But like all good things, my time in Melbourne had to end. From the buzz of a city, I was headed for some solitude. Thank you very much, John. From Melbourne, we moved to Kangaroo Island near Adelaide in South Australia. Kangaroo Island is a scenic paradise, untouched and pure. Exploring the vast island, I realized this was as intimate as one could get with nature. The stunning natural sculptures of remarkable rocks. The Admiral's Arch. The hidden beach at Stokes Bay. You can only get there by walking through this tiny cliff tunnel. could have spent the whole day at that beautiful beach but our guide Rob was keen to give us the true taste of nature at the island. Welcome to Kangaroo Island, having a uh, fairly traditional Australian uh, Aussie lunch out in the bush today, out in the wild, which is nice, in amongst the eucalyptus. What do we have? Well, today we're having a really nice barbecue lunch, so we got some uh, Kangaroo Island whiting, which uh, in my very biased opinion is probably the nicest tasting fish in all of Australia. Rob cooked a simple yet delicious meal under a tent in the forest for us. How's that look? The setting was perfect. Good. The lunch yeah. was even better. One bit of advice, if you are ever in Kangaroo Island, this is what they call room service. I've been to different cafes and restaurants all around Australia, but this has been a completely different setting. Sitting right in the middle of a farm in the exceptional Kangaroo Island, uh, this has been a fantastic meal. So well fed and we are ready for some adventure. Spotting kangaroos on quad bikes. This is the best way to see the otherwise inaccessible part of Kangaroo Island. Hop on and ride through a variety of terrain, through native bush, open grassland and some rocky pathways with kangaroos for company but not like they were when I was in Ballarat earlier it was time now to get back to the real world after an unforgettable taste of amazing Australia a land of beauty of adventures and thrill and surprises at every step. If you find your way there, I promise you will come back with memories to last a lifetime.